hello everyone. I'm uh, Baptiste Jonglet from uh, INRIA from France. Uh, I'm going to present you our, what I call our journey into net neutron and uh, networking generic switch. So what we did with this, and we are still doing it, um, <coughs> is to have bare metal network reconfiguration for a large scale research platform. So we go into a bit more details. But first, what we do at INRIA and stack. So INRIA is, um, is a main uh, national research center in France for computer science. So we have almost 4,000 researchers in all areas of computer science. Uh, and I'm part of the stack research group. So it's a small, uh, small part of INRIA. Um, and we work, we do research on infrastructure. So OpenStack is part of uh, our research. And uh, I just check we, people from our group uh, did presentation at OpenStack Summit and then Open Infra Summit since 2016. And I discovered that there were apparently two summits in 2018. I'm not completely sure about this, but. So we, we try to, to do applied research and to give back to the community. That's a, in, an important aspect of our, of our group. So um, this work is part of a, of a research platform, which is called Grid 5000. So we just uh, celebrated the 20 years of the platform recently. So it's a long-term effort. And the goal is to provide um, experimenters, scientists, with a tool to perform large-scale experimental research. So in practice, we provide bare metal access. So researchers, they can use the platform, uh, reserve some resources, get actual physical servers. Uh, we do energy monitoring, you can change the OS, you can reconfigure the network, you can do a lot of uh, stuff that is useful for science. We have many different hardware, ARM, PPC, um, FPGA, FPGA, whatever you want. So since the start of the project, there were about 2,500 scientific papers using the platform. So it has a, um, uh, an impact. So the scale may, may not seem that big now, we have seven, uh, 750 nodes, but for, um, I mean, for research, this is a, we still call this a large scale platform, even though private clouds can be much bigger than this. And there are similar platforms uh, elsewhere. This is just for friends. Okay, so we are now transitioning from this uh, 20 years platform, Grift 5000, to a new one, which is called uh, Slices Research Infrastructure, RI. So this is a much bigger project. So it's a, it's a European project. We got funded for, I think it's 30 years. So it's a, really the next generation of large scale platform. And um, one change is that Grief 5000 was mostly focused on servers. So doing uh, VM research and so on, cloud research. While here we want to experiment on the whole edge to cloud continuum. And that means um, be able to do a, a, an experiment like we do on our current platform with complete access to the hardware, monitoring everywhere and, and so on, but on the, on the whole infrastructure from sensors, uh, small servers, big servers, network, everything. So this is not yet, uh, this does not yet exist, but it's an ongoing project. So just an example of what people do with Grift 5000 currently. Um, so this is a colleague from Grenoble at CNRS uh, that did some network booting optimization. So he wants to boot physical hardware um, with different method and to optimize network access. So he has a, um, an experimental file system that is uh, NFS with caching, let's say. And so he used the platform to experiment uh, this, um, this tool and different methods. And this is something you cannot do with virtual machines, for instance. You need actual physical hardware. So another experiment which also involved networking, uh, this was a, um, a project that used our platform through a European uh, portal, let's say. Uh, it's a next generation internet architecture and they designed um, some kind of new way to do routing on the internet. And they wanted to test that uh, at scale. And so they used 
some resources on Google Five Thousand, some resources uh, in Germany, in Belgium, in Amsterdam, and they could interconnect all those resources using dedicated networks. Uh, these are research uh, facilities. And so they could test routing in this complex network with actual latency and so on. So it's really important to be able to do this kind of, uh, of research on, actual, uh, on the actual system. And um, this is an example where actually the user needs to have, let's say, dedicated networks. So this is uh, the goal of the presentation actually. How do we provide uh, to researchers like the, the two examples I showed, how do we provide them uh, isolated networks? So we do that through network re reconfiguration. And the goal is to make that fast. Um, as I said, we provide bare metal. So if you want to isolate some nodes, uh, what we do is we provide a VLAN to the user and we allow the user to put its physical nodes into this VLAN. And to do that, we, I mean, we, are our, we have our physical network and we need to reconfigure it dy dynamically. So we have a pretty large network, let's say. Um, and what's important is that, uh, so there are many small experiments that only need a few nodes, but some of the large scale experiments, they can need 50, 100 nodes, which means uh, 50, 100 physical ports to reconfigure, okay? And users, they don't want to wait 10 minutes for this reconfiguration to, to proceed. So we would like ideally to do everything in less than a minute or even less if, uh, if possible. So we already have a tool to do that. Uh, it's called KVLAN. It uses SNMP or ACSearch to, to reconfigure the, the switches. It's written in Erlang, so it's, it can parallelize things and so on. But um, we, ended, I mean, we ended up being limited because you need to define everything statically. So there are not enough VLANs for some experiments. Uh, if you want to put more VLAN, we need to do a lot of, re of configuration because um, DHCP, DNS, it's all static. So that's a, bit, a big overhead. overhead. Uh, so we wanted to modernize this tool and to make it more dynamic. Like uh, instead of having, having uh, let's say, 10 static VLANs for everybody, uh, now we would be able to create VLAN on demand and potentially as many as people need and to automate all the DHCP and DNS parts. Okay. Uh, so we evaluated a bit, uh, so, When KVLAN was started, there were uh, basically no other project doing this. But now we, we looked a bit at uh, what exists today. And actually, Neutron is a pretty good fit. Um, so the way we map our problem with Neutron is that um, people need VLAN. So we just say that, okay, a Neutron network, that's a VLAN. Well, that's already supported. Um, <clears throat> when you want to put a machine into a VLAN, actually it's a neat one port, you can represent it like this. And then from here you have subnets, IP allocation, automated DHCP and so on. So this um, fulfills our need pretty well. But there's one missing part which is the physical reconfiguration. Uh, and Neutron does not do that. So we found three plugins to, to perform this kind of reconfiguration. When using Ansible, we that did not look very active. Uh, one which relies on netconf. We are not very familiar with this, so we, we did not use this one. And then the last one, which is networking generic switch. Uh, it's actively developed. It uses simple technologies, let's say. So just netnico SSH. Um, supports many hardware vendors. And it's used by I Ironic. So that means it probably will stay maintained. So we, we decided to use uh, NGS. So just a quick overview of, of this all works together. Um, 
So we don't use Ironic, by the way. We have our own uh, solution for bare metal deployments. So we directly use uh, new, 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 Neutron. So the clients, they call uh, Neutron to create networks, ports, whatever. Then through uh, ML2, Neutron asks NGS, OK, can you bind this port? Can you create this network? I mean, do whatever you have to do. Um, and then what NGS does is connect through SSH to the actual switch and perform the action. So that's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> what, so the thing is, in the API call, you have to define which switch you want to reconfigure. So here we added a layer of uh, security, let's say, so that you can only access the switches and the ports that, are, that belong to your experiments. And then you can see also that you, you could have several um, changes to the same switch. So this can be a problem with some uh, hardware. So there's already something that exists in the NGS, which is locking. Um, and basically, you can say, OK, I don't want. So here, it's locking only one operation per switch. So if you have several ones, then they will, they will, the first one will proceed. And then the second one will take the lock afterwards. But you can also define a level of parallelism. You can say no more than three concurrent operations. So that's already, uh, already there. So we decided to test it. Um, so just configure it, give it access to a switch, create a port, and that takes 24, 24 seconds. So I like, wait, we need to create potentially hundreds of ports. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a bit too long. So we optimize things. Um, so NetMiko is a library that does actually the um, communication over SSH. So it was not uh, that well optimized. So we went on to eight seconds by optimizing timing. Then uh, SSH was actually, the SSH connection was slow because, uh, I mean, a switch is not very fast. So we, um, we changed the key exchange algorithm, and that's, uh, that's a bit faster. And then, OK, we did other things. Nine months later, we went back to the project, and it was back to 16 seconds. So OK, what changed? Uh, actually, NetMiko was updated, and they changed everything related to timing. So we had to, <laughs> to optimize again. Uh, and we push that upstream so that we hopefully won't uh, have regression like this um, in the future. And so we went on to two seconds, which is pretty good. But for, uh, for our needs, it's still too much. That would take uh, yeah, almost two minutes for 50 ports. So we needed to optimize uh, even more. <clears throat> and now, we, um, I mean, to get better performance, we need to change a bit the design. So just to understand what happens, uh, we did some measurements. So when you create a port, here, here is what happens. So Neutron does some stuff. OK, we don't really control that. Then you establish a SSH connection. OK, that's, that takes a bit of time. Some internal NetMiko stuff. Then the actual configuration. And then at the end, you want to save the configuration on the switch. And that takes also a long time. So the idea is, not, is to avoid doing that for every port individually and to do some batching, right? So ideally, we would do all steps only once, except configure, configure a port. And we could configure 10 ports at the same time. So that should uh, improve, thing, improve things a lot. So we are not the only one uh, thinking about this, obviously. Um, so in the meantime, <coughs> people from Stack HPC did some, um, some work on batching as well. So this, uh, this figure, I, I did the figure by looking at their code. So hopefully it's, it's correct, but uh, no guarantee. Uh, so the way their um, solution works, they leverage ETCD to have some, um, 
Okay, so the difficult part is that you can have several uh, different processes trying to do things in parallel, okay? And you want to coordinate that and to make sure that they use a common uh, SSH connection, let's say. So to do that, um, they basically decide that one neutron process uh, takes a lock on a switch, and every operation for a given amount of time will go through this uh, process. So um, once uh, this process is, uh, we know which one it is, everybody pushes common to a queue, a common queue, and then this thread will um, look at the queue and execute many commands uh, in a row. Okay, that's, uh, that's the idea. So we did our own design, um, I mean, at the same time, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so our design, we, so it's both simpler and uh, more challenging, let's say. Because what, did, what we did is that we introduced an agent. Um, so that makes sure that the coordination is much more simple because before you had several processes trying to coordinate. Now all processes, they talk to a single agent, okay? So the agent gets all the requests and then it can um, optimize any way um, it wants. So basically we have a queue for each switch and we have a dispatcher that, uh, that, tells, you, that tells each, uh, each thread, okay, this is uh, what you have to do, this is what you have to do. And each thread, it just uh, spins and um, performs all the, the commands that are in the queue. So it's actually a bit more complex than this. Uh, <clears throat> but um, I, I won't go into the full details. So to optimize things even further, we decided to use uh, the bulk API in Neutron. So that means you can do a single API call and create a hundred port if you want. So we found it, uh, we thought it was it would be more efficient instead of having hundred of parallel requests. But uh, the problem is that you need to have asynchronous um, operations, otherwise it's not. Uh, it's not really useful. So we implemented asynchronous uh, operations. And um, okay, you'll see it's, it's fast, but uh, in the end, it's probably too complex. So we'll see. Okay, so this was, this was about the design. Um, and so we implemented, so the batching Solution from StackHPC. This is upstream since a few months. And this, we have uh, implemented this, but not yet upstreamed it uh, since uh, I think it's been six months that it's uh, working quite well. Oops, that was a bit too fast. Okay, so to test um, how, how fast we can go. <clears throat> we used uh, Rally, which is a really nice project. Uh, I didn't know about Rally before, but uh, really it's, uh, it's working really well. And uh, Rally is talking to Neutron to ask him to reconfigure switches uh, in parallel, and we measure the total time it takes. So here, um, it's important to understand the measure we take because it's not that obvious. So what we do is we create a lot of ports at the same time. And the question is, how do you measure um, the time it takes? Okay, do you look at individual ports? Do you look at the sum as an average? I mean, it's not uh, that well defined. So we decided to look at the total time it takes from the first request to the last answer, let's say. And the advantage of this is that we can compare many different design solutions, asynchronous, synchronous. In the end, what you care is you start uh, sending request, how much time it takes until you get the last answer. And that's it. So just to make sure everything works, 
we create ports sequentially, so it's not efficient, but uh, it allows us to see what, what happens. So default is plain NGS without doing anything. Uh, lock, so with the lock, we make sure that there's only one uh, operation at a time. Batch is a code from stack, stack HPC, and agent is our solution. So here we are a bit faster, but um, I mean, that's not really significant. I mean, since um, we create ports sequentially, what I believe happens is that, um, yeah, we are able to do some batching because we try to save the config and that overlaps with the next request. So that's a bit, uh, basically we're a bit lucky here. Okay, so the same experiment configure port sequentially on a single switch, but this time we don't save the configuration. And here you see that, uh, obviously, if you do uh, no batching, uh, you save a lot because you don't have to save the configuration each time. And but all solutions are the same, basically. Okay, so now the, the interesting part. Uh, so we also create five ports, but this time we create them in parallel. And so here we can optimize, we can batch, we can uh, save the config only once at the end, and so on. So, um, obviously, if you lock to do only one operation at a time, you get the same performance as before, okay? So you make it sequential, okay? If you increase the number of locks, you get some parallelism. So lock two is you get two parallel SSH sessions that um, do some reconfiguration and so on up to five. So that uh, speeds up things a bit, but I mean, um, it does not scale that, uh, that much because at some point you cannot add more parallel SSH connection, obviously. So the batching code uh, works quite well. And so we have two variants here. One which is, is um, our design with parallel requests and the last one uses a bulk API. So basically the client does a single API call to configure all ports at the same time. And this is uh, more efficient as we, as we expected. Okay, so now uh, we move to a bit larger scale. So 20 ports. Uh, and yeah, basically we get the same result. Uh, batching is pretty good, much better than doing things in parallel or, sec or sequentially. And uh, our solution uh, works quite well, especially with um, the bulk API. <clears throat> and so in the end, in this experiment, uh, we took, let's say, 13 seconds to configure 20 ports on a single switch. So we believe well, that's pretty good. Uh, and if we compare to our very first try, which was uh, <laughs> really, really poor, it's 40 times faster. So that's, uh, we think that's uh, quite good. How much time do I have? Okay. Okay, so the next steps, uh, obviously we would like to, so we upstreamed uh, some stuff, but we would like to upstream the big um, design change. Um, and to be honest, as I said, asynchronous operation that's probably too big of a change to be upstream. Um, because like Ironic would need to adapt to this new uh, design, so probably not, uh, not easy to, to do. And also the implementation is, quite of, uh, is kind of difficult because you answer the client before you actually do the changes, then you change the status of the port afterwards, so um, yeah race conditions, this kind of thing, that's not uh, easy. So probably we will try to, to go back to a um, synchronous model. So the bulk API is nice, but less useful if, uh, we, if it's synchronous. Um, and then about the design of the agent. Uh, so for now, we use RPC to communicate between the and the agent. Maybe we'll switch to ETCDQ, like uh, in the um, stack design. 
if it's uh, if it's easier, we'll see. And then one thing which is uh, running we have to watch is NetMiko. <laughs> I mean, it's quite complex, so you can quickly have um, performance regressions. Okay, so all that was about creating ports, which is the main operation we want to do. But actually, uh, when you create a network, you also have work to do. That's because uh, you create a network, it allocates a VLAN, and you have to configure this VLAN on the switches, actually. And the thing is, you, can, you need to add the VLAN on all your switches, because you don't know in advance which one will be uh, used by the user. Uh, and currently, this is completely sequential. So remember, we have 32 switches uh, that just take edges. So in our agent, we parallelize uh, all this because uh, we have one thread to configure each switch, so this is fully parallelized. But uh, still, if you have a failure somewhere, then it will, um, I mean, our network is uh, distributed on different sites. So if one site goes down, it will affect all of the sites, so that's not really good. So we have um, a zone mechanism that is still not completely finished to be able to um, only create the network in a single site only when, when it's needed, let's say. So again, I won't go into that much details. But actually, you could also think that you could just pre-create all the VLANs everywhere, and that would be even simpler. So we have still not uh, decided what, um, which way we'll go. Okay, so this is what we upstreamed on the left, uh, and what remains to be upstream on the right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, well, uh, so this uh, work was done by me and a colleague at Inria. Uh, so we both do the design and the development. We are a small, uh, small team, actually. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, John Garbutt, because we, we talked about um, batching and the design, and Thomas Guaron, because he helped me to make the batching code uh, work two days before uh, the presentation, so <laughs> I could compare things. So thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Any questions, if we have time? Ah, yeah, there's one. Yeah. Do you really source the information for the ports associated to the, to the, to the Sorry? How do you know what ports to make configuration? Oh, so actually, um, we cheat a bit. <laughs> it's because we have a front, uh, another API in front of Neutron. And this other API has a mapping. So basically, the user says, uh, I want to configure this node. So there's a, just the name of the node. And we, are, we map this to a physical switch on the physical port. And that's where we do the access control also. Yeah. Yeah. Napalm? Um, I think I've heard about it, but uh, I haven't looked. Uh, isn't it based on Ansible? No? Okay. Yes. Cool, thanks. You mentioned Dell OS 9. I'm assuming you're running Dell switches. Yeah. Have you tried Sonic? Same kind of scenario? That's, uh, I think we are supposed to get uh, one to test, uh, yes. What about like the M Labs? I know like on the free version it doesn't really work well. So the problem we have with Sonic was OSPF v3 for IPv6. I believe. Oh, yeah, there's no OSPF v3. Ah, it's not even available. I yeah. haven't actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing just BGP. Okay. But not OSPF. Yeah. Uh, especially for IPv6. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe I'm the for, uh, beginning of the presentation. I'm, I'm wondering why you are not using MacDriver. Uh, MacDriver, not on the MacDriver to build network uh, points and so on. So, is that VXLAN or? No, no, MacDriver, I mean, uh, the. Uh, extension for the Neutron to manage the 
physical uh, like execution on the Samsung Note Gate Board network. Oh, by the, uh, so, uh, I never heard about this. So like uh, there are various vendor drivers for a network, for example, so Cisco is delivering a driver. Of course, for delivering a virtual networks, not for ironic. Oh, okay, I see. Well, so yeah. to create a virtual uh, environment, but uh, I'm wondering if it's possible to use my driver. So we have a constraint, which is we need to use VLANs. So I'm not sure my drivers can mm. handle VLANs if it's virtual uh, networking. I don't know. I, I'm just saying, uh, th thinking yeah. about the abstraction yeah. of uh, where to put this. Because so um, so actually, yeah, the requirement is to give layer two connectivity to the user mm -hmm. across all of the network. Sure. So we could actually uh, use virtual networking. We could use VXLANs and so on. And the reason we don't do it is because we have um, several different vendors. Uh, because we, it's a national infrastructure, so we don't decide. Yeah, yeah, we don't decide uh, where, what each uh, lab buys, basically. Uh, okay. They have a uh, public contract and so on. So we need to support everything. So the simplest common denominator is VLANs. And that, uh, I mean, every network admin knows how to use VLANs, so that's really the simplest way. But that does make things more complex because you need to configure each. Uh, Thanks. Thanks.